Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the sixth round post-fight show with me, Zane Simon, and my co-host, as always, Eddie Mercado. We are here coming to you just after the close of UFC 247 in Houston, Texas, where John Jones retained his light heavyweight title over Dominic Reyes. And Eddie, first and foremost, did you have did you have it 3-2, Dom? I did. I, I mean, you can't outstrike someone three rounds and then the other guy win two rounds without a 10-8 and, and they win. So I think Reyes won that fight. Yeah, I was typing it all out live, scoring it live, and I was like, all right, I can see how it might be all tied up in the fifth round. I have it three rounds to one for Reyes. But my guess was going into that last round, by the end of the last round, I was like, even though I by the end of it, I had three two Reyes. I was like, you know, I don't think the judges are going to give it to him. And yeah, the the biggest reason was honestly, unfortunately for him, like Jones, you know, he said, oh, my God, it's it was my wrestling, my great wrestling attack that turned the tables and I got takedowns in three of the rounds. And that's what's what did it. And I I cannot believe that any judge gave him any credit for any of those takedowns. But instead, it was purely and plain and simple that he was fighting the whole fight off the front foot and Reyes was fighting the whole fight off the back foot. Yeah, that's such an old school way to score things, though. It, it is a really dumb way to score things. It really is, but especially for John Jones and that aura he projects and that confidence he projects that he's got the full fight and control and all that. You know, he's really got kind of that uh, Benson Henderson, Henderson thing going, where like Henderson was the smoothest when it came to not looking like you got hit as hard as you just got hit. Right. And especially for leg kicks and body kicks, John Jones did a great job no selling a lot of those. And he did. but like he still got outstruck though. He did. But that's just it, is if you can no sell stuff to judges who are watching live and they don't have the punch count numbers in front of them, they don't have all that, they're gonna get fooled a lot of times. They're gonna let themselves get fooled. So and there's some incompetent judging going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I took heat all night for my own wild judging, as I'm sure you saw. <laughs> I don't but, even think that was wild judging. Like, we'll get to we'll get to that later. But yeah, we'll John Jones that. did not win this fight, in my opinion. He, like, I'm he, glad he won for the simple fact that I picked him, and he set a record for most uh, championship defenses in UFC history. Yep. But man, oh, he's it's a part of American history. If you if you were listening to that post fight speech real carefully, he wants you well, to know like this is going down. This has become part of the Constitution now. It's, <laughs> it's an amendment. It's legislation. Yeah, man. Credit to Reyes for bringing the fight to John Jones, not being intimidated by the moment, and fighting so well off his back foot for as long as he did. Yeah, like I that mean, movement was just phenomenal and. That dude can move and strike. I mean, the, I'm surprised he didn't guess. He didn't guess out sooner than he did. Yeah. No, he. All credit to him for the pace he was pushing. Like the end of the first round, I could see his mouth was open and he was he had the sheen of sweat on him. And I'm like, I this this fight could get pretty ugly for him late, and it never did. Like even when Jones was really running away from it, it or away, away with it in the fifth round. He still couldn't control Reyes. He still could never pin him down. And he could never stop Reyes from landing shots on him. So, you know, Reyes, all credit to him, too. And I got to say, normally, I would say that the fake glove touch to immediate power shot to open a fight is totally unwarranted. But John Jones is exactly the kind of dude who will do anything he can like that to you at any given time right so in this case all credit to reyes for just going whole whole hog on the thing from moment second one and fighting hard all the way through it you know he he came out with exactly the right game plan to beat jones and probably kind of should have yeah definitely probably he got 
Man, I don't even, I'm not sure if I want to say he got robbed, but I kind of feel like he got robbed. Yeah. But credit to Jones. Jones did what Jones should have done, and that's that's thrive in the championship rounds. Yep. But I don't think Jones expected to get so far behind on the scorecards. I thought I think he expected Reyes to gas sooner and, and be able to get three, four, and five. He clearly had the momentum going into the third round. And that's I think the the point where this fight really does get tricky is that in that third round, he still got outstruck 19 to 26 in significant strikes, but it had, it really felt in that round, like there was a momentum shift. The thing was, is that even with that momentum shift on, he couldn't, he didn't put out enough offense or work it, uh, you know, up his pace enough to actually take advantage of, of it clearly to the point that you can absolutely definitively say that that he got that round like watching it live i thought maybe he might have kind of lost the third round and i kind of thought or he might jones might have kind of won the third round and reyes might have even won the fourth because he hurt jones so bad to the eye early in that round yeah but either way like you know i get that there's some wiggle room in there but it really has now become a trend over his past three title defense or of his past couple title defenses now, where it's just like Jones is his record setting champion, and is he even the champ? Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's true. Um, and I mean, I guess you can like the judges maybe were like, okay, the third round, the significant strikes were maybe even, so Jones's forward pressure is what they yeah. gave it to him, or, yeah. or why they might have given it to him. But one judge had it four to one, right? Yeah, one judge gave Jones one of the first two rounds, which is just nuts. Yeah, like, what fight are they watching? Yeah, that was the That's same crazy, dude man. who was, like, going wild with different scorecards all night, it turns out. Like, how do you, what's the criteria for judging an MMA fight? Like, oh. how do you get licensed for that? So, there are two ways. One is for a lot of commissions, you have to do, spend a whole bunch of time working small shows, regional shows on like weekends, every weekend, all the time, build up a long credentialed history of experience and consistency. And the other is to just like know somebody on the athletic in the athletic commission who can get you a job man something's got to change yeah something's definitely has to change something's been needing to change on that front for like a century so you think i mean they should definitely run this one back right yeah i don't think they're gonna but they should they should definitely run it back it's mm, i would be so upset if i was reyes right now <laughs> i would be so not sound nearly as upset as he should have been post fight all credit to him he was just like you know it's the game it is what it is i thought i had it judges thought something different oh well i'll live and learn and i'm just like yeah. you that's really be- that's yeah. really like the the whole you know football kind of post fight speech like yeah. oh, we lost you know being pc for the camera he's yep. probably backstage choking babies or something you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's got to be and of, you know they all the cliche goes you know don't leave it to the judges but yeah, man but... you can't you outstrike someone clearly outstrike someone over the course of three rounds and they take two rounds and you lose and you lose four to one on one of the scorecards like ah uh, that's tough yeah, no, it, it really is tough and I think too if Reyes doesn't start getting loud about this in public he's really just going to he's going to talk himself out of a rematch because, you know, it's not not like Reyes was any kind of big B side for John Jones. This isn't the Gustafson rematch. This isn't the Cormier rematch. It's not any of that. And even for Cormier and Gustafson, who both had hard, hard fights with Jones and were good, solid B sides, they still had to wait years to get their rematches. Although, yeah, in the in DC part of that was just because Jones was such an intense screw up during those years after he beat them, but I yeah I just I can easily see if Reyes is just like ah it is what it is you know I'm work go back work hard make it make myself better and come back and do it then the UFC is going to be like yeah you know Jones wants to fight Stipe Miocic that'd be pretty cool let's do that 
And you know what, man? I knew something was up with the judging when earlier in the night they were like, oh, the computers went down. We got to <laughs> wait for the computers to come back before we tally a winner. It's like, don't they have like physical scorecards that they write this stuff down on? Or like, can't they? Can't they add? The, can't they all add the 30? Yeah. <laughs> You know? Oh man, it's we're going by unit to ten here. Come on, it's not that hard. Ah, <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. It's kind. Of, it leaves me with a bad feeling. Like I didn't. I don't like the feeling this fight gave me. Like the fight itself, phenomenal, right? The fight was like, amazing. My heart was racing the entire time. Like yeah. I was like, oh no, I kind of had a bad feeling going in for John Jones. Like, so I don't know. I think Reyes is showing up. Like he. Yeah. I, I had the feeling. I still picked John Jones going in. Because you kind of have to, right? Yeah. And then, man, Reyes just showed the F up. It, it's. I think we've hit this – Jones is hitting this tipping point where, like, it's become clear – you know, it's been clear for a while that the less his opponent pushes him, the less hard Jones tries in the cage. And I think lately he's just been getting confident enough to the point that even when his opponent is pushing him – he just kind of thinks, "Oh, I've got this totally in control. I'm not gonna have. I'm not gonna actually work that hard." And this was like, you know, the, the Santos fight felt like a tipping point too, but this really felt like a tipping point where those first three rounds, it's like, I know you think you have this totally in control and that you have the perfect plan to go all the way through this, but you really actually are losing this fight, and the urgency is just not there. And, yeah, zero urgency, which yeah. is crazy because the pressure, the forward pressure was there the entire fight. Yeah. But he didn't, he wasn't able to start racking up some volume until the output of Reyes started to slow down. Yeah. And that was the only reason yep. that Jones was able to get off because he was yeah, getting I mean, clocked with beautiful you, you shots. Could, you could see even all the way through into the late rounds when Reyes was dead tired and Jones was still pursuing him the same way. When Reyes found the energy to fire away, it wasn't like Jones had suddenly figured out Reyes' offense. Reyes was still landing pretty clean all fight. Yeah, and it was it was beautiful. Reyes did a phenomenal job here. And like we really should be talking about the new light heavyweight champion, Dominic yeah. Reyes, but John Jones got away with one. And this is only going to create more hate for him, too. It is. That's okay, though. He kind of deserves it. Oh, no. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's he's brought a lot of that on himself, if not all of it. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just really curious as to what happens with him next. Yeah, no kidding. I really do think, honestly, the UFC is probably just going to quick pivot off this and set up the Stipe Miocic fight or try to. I mean, the yeah. weird part of that is that Jones has never really sounded like he's actually sold on fighting at heavyweight. He, right. Al he always kind of like, yeah, that sounds interesting in like two or three more years, but I kind of want to keep doing my thing at light heavyweight. And that's like two or three more years, two or three years ago, he's been saying this, you know, it's, we keep hearing it all the time. Like, oh yeah, that's an interesting idea. Good idea, guys. We'll, we'll talk about that later. And I'll just keep staying here and beating these light heavyweights. Who's uh, who's Corey Anderson about to fight? Jan? Jan Blahovic. Again? Yep. Like, who cares? Like, no one really wants to see that, right? The winner of that versus John Jones? No, nobody wants – that 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 fight is not going to get either man a title shot. You're much more likely to see, like – A uh, rematch or a move up to – Get a rematch off of beating Glover Teixeira or something. Oh, man, I'm even less interested in that. I know, I know. Man, that, they have to run this back. I do I do honestly think that the UFC is going to try really hard to book that Stipe Miocic fight just because Stipe, too, has also been talking like, I don't want to fight Daniel Cormier again. Are you kidding? I have no interest in fighting that guy. Yeah. So the, it, the time <laughs> is right, but yeah, Reyes... This is a fight that could easily be run back, and it might even, you know, it might be a bigger pay per view when they do because a lot of people think Reyes won. So if Reyes can get out there and get ahead of the narrative and push himself as the champion in exile, he might be able to build some actual hype for this fight the second time around. Yeah, like you were alluding to earlier, he really missed the boat on 
on yeah. lobbying for that post fight. Like he had the crowd behind him. Yep. Like he, just, it was yep. there. He had his moment and he all just he went PC is, and all he had to do is grab the mic and say, This is my belt. This is my belt. Yeah. John Jones is not champion. That belt is a fake belt from here on out. Everybody mm-hmm. knows he's where he's got my belt around his waist everywhere he goes. And you know, yeah. like what's the UFC gonna do to that? Like they you, you can really force... He could have forced their hand a lot more than he did. Yeah, he, he kind of screwed the pooch on that one. Maybe he'll try it in, in the aftermath. He's still probably got a little time to jump on it before he, that's completely gone, but we'll see. We'll see what Dana White says, too, because you know Dana White just kind of tends to get fixated on things, and if he really thinks that Reyes deserved to be champion, he may just get fixated on the idea of we have to make that fight right now. Like he's kind of fixated on Conor McGregor has to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov after yeah. the Nurmagomedov Ferguson fight. I've never felt more icky after a John Jones fight than this. Yeah. Well, except for the Matt Hamill one, but that's like a that's a completely different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let let's let's pivot to our co-main event here, Valentina Shevchenko. Caitlin Chukagian, and uh, I, you know, it's fight, what we all expected. Yeah, like like the Jessica I fight. These women are kind of you know, we're lining up whoever's whoever's kind of put themselves in the right spot for a title shot, like the Liz Carmouche fight too. Like they're paper challengers. Yeah, they're they paper look good on paper. Like they on paper, yeah, they earn their shots or whatever, but. Realistically, Valentina Shevchenko is miles and miles and miles beyond everybody else in her division, period. Like she is so technical and she is able to deliver such power and she is so well-rounded that no one is just on the – no one is on the same plane of existence. Yep. She has to fight a champion in another division. Like that's really the the only move for her. Or credit, she's just going to keep slaughtering people. Credit to Caitlin Chukagian. She came out and she actually, you know, tried to step on, step up her own offense, unlike Carmouche, who just was kind of happy to skate that one out on the back foot and let it, let it slide away. Made for a more entertaining fight. But here's the question that, that I think we got to ask. Are you actually interested in seeing Amanda Nunez versus Shevchenko 3? Absolutely. Yeah? But yeah, I, I thought they was, had some pretty good fights. Two was so dull. So dull. Yeah, the first one was super close, though, and, like... Yeah, I don't, they were both I, close, but the second fight was just such a letdown. Well, let me counter with this question. What else do you do with Amanda Nunes, and what else do you do with Shevchenko? I, personally, I mean, I'm happy watching them whoop up on paper challengers like i would much rather see valentina shevchenko go out and dominate the caitlin chukagians of the world and create this aura of an you know to just cement for all time this aura of an entirely dominant champion then throw her into these fights where like we just get to watch her and amanda nia stare at each other for five rounds and then one of them gets their hand raised well, how about this? Right. Let Roxy Mataferi get a shot, and then we'll entertain the idea of the trilogy fight between oh, Nunes and Jay. Hey, that just sets me. That, that just sets up way too wrong because we're already overlooking Mataferi there. Then you set her up, and then you're like, and then we'll do the trilogy after she beats her. Like, come on. Uh, but I mean, we already agreed that Chechenko is miles and miles. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, I understand the position we're in. I'm just saying that we've seen that fight twice. Nunez won it twice. I don't... I, I guess that because there are forces pushing towards it, just because as they both continue to be dominant, people are going to keep having amnesia about how unfun their fight was, and just be like, yeah. wow, we got to do it again. I'm just not thrilled for it. I'm not. Yeah, I totally get it, because you're going to have to study tape on those fights again. Yes, yes, thank you. Totally, somebody finally somebody finally it, feels me here. I'm just surprised. I was surprised to see all the people were coming out being like, yeah, Amanda Nunez, that's the woman who needs to fight Shevchenko. Now I'm like, we saw that fight twice. 
Yeah, because it's realistically like the only challenge for her. I know. I don't I know. trust. I don't trust Strawweights moving up to face her. No, like I, I don't. Seems pretty clear. I mean, after Joanna did it and Shevchenko just threw her all over the place, there's a serious strength discrepancy going on there. But yeah, uh, it was great to see. She was so dominant everywhere. Credit to Chikagian for never looking defeated and never just quitting. Even yeah. she got her wig split with that beautiful elbow on the ground at the end of the first. Mm-hmm. She didn't get discouraged. She kept coming out uh, and, and trying. She just isn't the same caliber as Shevchenko. And like, it's that simple. Yeah. We knew that going in. It was as advertised. It's just, it's like a Demetrius Johnson kind of situation. Yeah. And I enjoyed that situation, frankly. I did. I mean, and I still wanted him to go fight TJ Dillashaw at some point or Cody Garbrandt because he hadn't before. And I thought it would have been interesting, but I've just I've seen the Shevchenko Nunez fight, and they just weren't they weren't entertaining fights. Yeah. So, I just I'm not I don't feel like it's a matchup that pays off, and I don't think I don't feel like we're gonna get you know like what if a Nunez if Nunez wins again and then Shevchenko goes back down to flyweight, or it's not like, like there's no flyweight contender coming up for like the next two years probably that can challenge Shevchenko. Do we just make her and Nunez fight for the next two years because they're the only people they can face? Yeah. I feel you. It's It's got to be Roxy. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I, wa- I do want Roxy to get her title shot. She's working hard for it, so. And, I just, yeah, there's really nobody else. Especially with her, you know, derailing, Roxy derailing the hype train of Macy Barber. It's like, there's legit nobody. Like so many people are coming off loss in that division. Yeah, it's it, it's not in a strong place for a next contender. Um, you know, I, my guess is that somebody like anybody else is going to need another fight, Motiferi or whoever. But yeah, with Maya fighting Chukagian and losing, Maya was a potential contender who's now coming off a loss. Calderwood might be calling for a shot, but we've already seen her lose to both uh, Chukagian and I, right? I believe. Yeah, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, no, she hasn't fought. Never mind. Calderwood has not fought Jessica I. So, but if Calderwood, like, you know, Calderwood has a potential to step up, but we just saw her lose to Chukagian. And, like, Calderwood is not a physical flyweight at all. Mm -mm. So, and then Araujo was supposed to be the next potential contender, too. She lost to Jessica I. Like, it's just, it definitely is a rough, rough spot. And we saw what happened with Jessica I and uh, Shevchenko. Yeah, that was not competitive. No, that's... Yeah, tough place to be, but like I appreciate the greatness of Shevchenko, and I'm really happy that the UFC opened up this division because it's the weight class she belongs in. Yeah, it's the right weight class for her. She's the, a dominant figure in it. I, I'm just kind of okay with like you know if she can actually it, if facing fighters that can't really challenge her lets her open up her offense and be a more creative, you know, more Anderson Silva esque talent. Then I'm okay with that. Yeah, or maybe maybe she'll pull an Anderson Silva and just fight people at 35 who aren't Amanda yeah, Nunes. there you go. Just, like, go fight Jermaine Duran to me f- for, like, a random fight. Or, Aspen uh, Ladd. Yeah, Aspen Ladd or, you know, uh, yeah, w- one of those other uh, – jo- Joanna uh, – or oh, man, what's her name? You, Pena. Juliana Pena. There Juliana we go. Juliana Pena. Yeah, fight, like – I would see her fight in fights like that. I think they'd be fun. I've just seen the Amanda Nunez fight a bunch. You know? Yeah. I mean, sure. The UFC's done it before. Like, why not? Yeah. Yeah. It would be, that would be the, I think that is actually the most fun solution to me for, uh, for Shifting right now. Just what to do with her. 
Yeah. Just go jump up and fight some fight some bantamweight top contenders for the heck of it. After Roxy, of course. Yeah. <laughs> let, let Roxy get that title shot next. All right, that brings us to a heavyweight bout. Justin Taffa, Juan Adams, and... Um, man, Juan Adams seems like kind of a cool dude, but uh, I'm not sure he's cut out for this right now. No, that's... that's uh, Three straight losses, you know, he... Uh, it's almost like he's just too big. Yeah. Like, he's just too big and too slow. Well, and I think the unfortunate thing for him here, too, is that, you know, he he just moved to Jackson Wink, and they just retooled his fighting style entirely. You could see that. And it's just like, man, that's a tough thing to, like, suddenly after two or three years of fighting one way to come out and be like, okay, I've got a whole new system that I'm going to apply in the cage for the first the first time in a real fight. And it did not, you know, it, it was not a comfortable fit yet. And that may be one of those things that grows and changes over time. But the moment Taffa started opening up, Adams was just eating hard strikes clean. And like, he was like a legit wrestler, wasn't he? Yeah. He was like a D1 wrestler. Like, why isn't he coming out on that Curtis Blades tip? Yeah, I mean, guys that big, that's the blades is kind of a kind of a freak of nature in that most guys that big, they just can't get their hips low enough to hit easy doubles. But blades can and Adams, it does not seem can. Yeah, it just it doesn't compute. No, but credit to Taffa. Yeah, he did his thing, especially coming off that last loss, which was really brutal, by the way, where he got caught rushing in like he didn't get caught rushing in this time and landed yeah. that sweet uppercut. Like as, as you Adams is like bouncing off the cage. It was a very Mark hunt uppercut to land. He almost did the walk off too, but realized yeah. like, Oh, wait a minute. I better finish this fight. <laughs> Which Great was credit him. to him for doing that too. Like he wanted that moment, but was like, ah, I'd rather have this win here. Yeah. <laughs> he almost pulled a, uh, Oh, a Rosen strike. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Credit to him. Keeps him on the roster. Strong win. Let's move on, though. Featherweight bout. Dan Ige, Mirsad Bekdich. This was a really fun fight. Absolutely. And and this was like my sleeper fight going in. Yeah. I thought this, I, if if the main event wasn't as great as it was, I, I figured this would be fight of the night. Yep. Because, I, man, Ige started so strong. Yeah, and he was putting hands on Bektich, and he, he credit to Bektich for for coming back in the second though, and like yeah. being like, well, I'm getting this fight to the ground, and that's where we're gonna be. And man, that third round was just fun. Both men trying to impose their will, Ige eking it out. It is wild that even Danny Ye knows that he is like the most venomous first round fighter and a terrible second round fighter. Yeah. I, like, I don't even know what it is because I, I'm, you know, part of that is he gets probably gets starts getting tired. He's he's always even when he's finished strong, he's always seemed like he's lost a, a step by the end of the fight. Mm-hmm. But it must be too that like he just gets so comfortable with how dominant he can be early that he just goes out way overconfident in the second round or something. Because almost every fight he's had, he just seems like he just gets taken apart as bad in round two as he took the person apart in round one. Yeah. He's a, he's a quick starter, man. Like he's, he comes yeah. out hot. It's like the opposite of Cowboy Cerrone. Yeah. Like, no kidding. He is such a fast starter and then kind of, I don't know, just gets lost in the second, but I, I credit to his corner for amping him up for the third. Yeah. They, I, they did a really good job and like they know him and they know yep. how to trigger him properly to where he he gets into the game and he knows he has to go out and win the third. Yep. It's, yeah, it's a good. It's great performance from him, and his boxing is really improved by leaps and bounds. I mean, he doesn't he still doesn't have like a lot of range to his boxing game. It's a lot of short power hooks, leaping in, but he's really a smooth natural puncher. Oh yeah, they're clean, very yep. clean. And you know who he needs to fight now? Who? Hakeem Dewaru. 
Ooh, that would be a fun one. I was also thinking Arnold Allen. Ooh, that's a big step up. But, like, Hakeem's on a four-fight winning streak. Ige yeah. is now on a five-fight winning streak. Like, that seems like a natural... Uh, I mean, I think this fight's an exciting get, matchup. I, guess I think this fight's going to get Ige ranked one way or another. I'm fine with that, too. Yeah. I feel like Arnold Allen's on a crazy win streak also. Wouldn't he won, like, seven or eight in a row or something ridiculous? Maybe even more than that. And like that, that means, and that also means like that lines you up too. Like there's Arnold Allen, Shane Burgos, and uh, Sadiq, Sadiq Youssef, and Oof. Ryan Hall are all on hot streaks. They are all ranked in the bottom end of the fifteen right now. And Danny Gate in any of those fights would be a hell of a lot of fun. Is Jose Aldo fighting uh, Cejudo for the belt? Yes. Why in the world is Jose Aldo ranked number 11 at featherweight? I, I, the rankings are terrible. What's I don't, going on here? They're, t- they're so unwilling to like admit that somebody's just not in the division anymore. Alexander Gustafson is still ranked at light heavyweight, and the dude retired like eight months ago. Yeah, I mean, DC is ranked at light heavyweight. <laughs> yeah. Like, you want to know how meaningless rankings are? I am currently ranked number eight at middleweight in the state of Virginia. Nice. That's absurd. Like, it's cool, but, like, that's absurd and wild. Like, I shouldn't be anywhere near any rankings. Rankings mean nothing. <sighs> but if depending on which, what you're ranked on, either topology or uh, fight, uh, fight. I'm ranked on favorites. I'm ranked on topology. Okay. I mean, that's almost all just some mathematics going in there. So it may just be purely that there are so few middleweights in the state of Virginia. Like, it's Absolutely. you and eight other, seven other guys. Yeah, it's, it's, there's like 16 of us, maybe. Yeah. And you're the only one coming off a win or something. Who knows? <laughs> it's ludicrous. It is. Rankings right. and trash. That brings us to a heavyweight bout. Derek Lewis, Ilir Latifi, and I am aghast that there is any scoring controversy for this fight at all. One and three for Derek Lewis. Unquestioned. Based off of strikes. Yeah. Like, there. this is the easiest kind of fight to score. Ilir Latifi got Derek Lewis down all the round two. Derek Lewis didn't do any damage. Ilir Latifi didn't do any damage. Derek Lewis landed all the big strikes in one round one and all the big strikes in round three. He landed outlanded Ilir Latifi in significant strikes 20 to five. This is not mm-hmm. a question of take down, steal the round. So, and yet I got a whole bunch of people coming after me on, on, on Twitter over this saying that Ilir Latifi won that fight. And there's no, no. way. Nope. Not in modern day MMA. Like no. that's, that's again, that's old school judging. Yeah, and uh, I'm honestly proud. I'm proud of the judges for making this a unanimous decision. Yeah. I mean, we I got a lot believe. of close fights tonight, by the way. There were, there were a lot of close fights. I just can't believe, I can't imagine watching that fight and being like, I want MMA to look like the kind of sport where Alir Latifi wins it just off top control. Yeah. No, I, I definitely thought Lewis won the fight because I put strikes ahead of any, everything else, which is why I think Dominic Reyes beat John Jones tonight. Yeah, yeah. Because he landed more strikes in more of the rounds. And it's really that simple. And I am um, not willing to argue with you on that point at all. But I will say this, though. Latifi shows that he can hold his own at heavyweight. Yeah. So I think his stock goes up. You if, know, his, credit, if his chin can hold up then like that like it did this this fight then his his wrestling prowess puts him way ahead of most of the division he's always going to have an issue being as small as he is you know kind of in like a same pat berry kind of way but you know he uh he did way better than i really expected him to do yeah so kudos to him yeah no i'm I was impressed by Latifi. There's not a lot of good wrestlers in the division. He can go a long way. It's just that other than Daniel Cormier, literally everybody who comes out and just tries to beat 
Derek Lewis with their wrestling game fails. Like that's not there are a lot of people you can beat that way. Derek Lewis is not one of them. Yeah, remember that uh that uh Francis Naganu stare down? How terrible was that? <laughs> was that not the worst thing ever? But guess what? Derek Lewis is now throwing switch head kicks and flying knees. I love it. I've yes. always loved that part of his game. It's so unexpected and so weird. It's the best. It Although, is. in all honesty, it was those knees that was getting him into trouble because he oh, would yeah. knee himself right into the clinch and then right into the takedown. Yeah. And it's for, like, man, just stop doing that and just tee off. For a dude that punches as ridiculously hard as he does – his form on his punches is so wild that he's not even comfortable being a puncher. You know, right. it's like I want to land something big. I'm going to default to high kicks and flying knees. And that's always been like this weird sort of funky anomaly in his game. The dude can hit harder than anyone, but he gets so wild and out of position when he, when he throws his punches that he just doesn't want to. Totally out of control. Yep. That brings us to a middleweight bout. Trevin Giles, James Kraus, one this was great. night, which I am thrilled about, frankly, because Kraus deserves all that bonus money for stepping up. Absolutely. Here. Abs- and, and even more. Because yeah. not only did he step up on short notice, but he fought a weight class up and he made it debatable. Yeah. Like, now, uh, here's the this thing. is great. I took an immense immense verbal whipping on Twitter. I scored this fight 30-26 for Giles. 30-26? Yes. Giles won that first round? I he, I thought he, he hit and hurt Kraus way more than Kraus's back control mattered. Not way Giles more. almost got choked out. He did almost get choked out. I will Kraus say was this. closer to finishing the fight in the first round. I, I will say this. I also would totally score this fight a draw, too. I'm fine with either way. I'm fine with wait, 29. Wait, 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 wait. How do you go from 30-26 to a draw? Because rounds one and three I thought were razor thin, and the round two was a 10-8. It was a clear 10-8. It was a no questions asked 10-8 round. Mm-hmm. Okay. Round two, Trevin Giles outstruck James Krause four to one. Beat, yeah, round two was – and he almost choked him out at the end yeah, of the round. Beat the brakes off of him. Yeah. James Krause came back to his corner and said, I'm getting my ass kicked out here. Mm-hmm. Round one, Krause had a lot of back control, got close on a couple chokes, also got hit really hard every time that fight was not on Je- Trevin Giles' back. I realized most of that round was him on Trevin Giles' back. I got no problem with scoring it for James Krause. Live, I was kind of like, I don't know. I think the judges are going to reward Giles for his damage. Mm. Round three, Trevin Giles unquestionably, I thought, still landed the harder shots. Oh, yeah. And I think there's just this, like, like, but like I say, I would be totally fine seeing it 30-26 or a draw. I know that round three was close. Kraus came back. Giles was tired. Krauss stayed in it. It was just like, I don't know. I think there's a tendency to really, it's the kind of fight where there's such a huge underdog bias that people were just like, Krauss is in this fight, thus he must be winning it. Yeah, I, I definitely don't think Krauss won the fight. Because no. anytime Giles would throw anything, it would just visibly move Krauss. And whenever I see yeah. that, I have to. You know, I have to favor those as as more substantial and significant than whatever the other guy is throwing. That's, and of course, that's... like, you know, this isn't Krause's weight class. I get all that, yeah. and that's probably a big reason why. But regardless, fact of the matter is, Giles was throwing the harder strikes. Exactly. Like, I love the underdog story. I thought Krause could win this fight, and I thought he could win it for the exact reasons that he got a split, which is that he is a more technical fighter than Trevin Giles. Yeah. But... He was also like the moment this fight started and they started trading shots. It's like, oh my god, Trevin Giles might kill him. <laughs> yeah, I, I credit to Giles for escaping the, those rear naked choke attempts there in the yeah. first. 
And honestly, I think the only reason Cross didn't get subbed in the second is because the bell rang. Yeah, no, he he very cl- came very close to getting choked out. I realize it may it, it it may be an absurd skew. It may feel like an absurd skewing in hindsight to be like thirty twenty six Giles. I just I'm I'm shocked that nobody seemed to score round two a ten eight for him. No, I can totally see the ten eight. I and, just honestly can't see giving the third to Kraus. No, a lot of people thought that Kraus won this fight, though, and I think I, this was twenty nine twenty eight or twenty nine eight or twenty nine twenty seven for Giles. Yeah, it's twenty nine twenty seven at worst. At, at at worst, I would say it's either that, or if you're really just on this whole like, if you're on like, entirely on the under underdog hype train for James Kraus here, it was a draw. You know. Yeah, that's. I, I think the judges definitely got it right, but I was a little surprised it was a split because I thought it was unanimous. But I'm just glad that they both got paid for this. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Is really, I am absolutely glad that they both got fight of the night bonuses for this because this is the kind of like the UFC needs to reward them for this because neither of them needed to be in the cage today, like. G- Giles' opponent, after the weigh-ins, he pulled out of the fight. He, you know, he well, he was hospitalized. He didn't pull out of the fight. He legitimately right. had had to be taken out of the fight. But Trevin Giles showed up. He weighed in. He officially was ready to step in the cage that night. He deserves his show money already. Yeah, he sh- he made weight. He showed. Kraus was there to corner. Yeah, Kraus was just there to corner. He didn't have to take a fight today. The ball's like, on that guy, man. No, I'm such yeah. a fan. And, so, and I, I know I told you this before, but he's how I got my Twitter handle, the Eddie Mercado, because he's the James Kraus. Uh-huh. We we're both born in Newport News, Virginia, so I'm like, oh, that's my dude. Been a big fan for a long time. So uh, I was I was super happy that uh, he stepped in and, and manned up and just you know, he's like, f it, it's a fight, let's do it. I, on the other hand, got my Twitter handle just because there's already another Zane Simon, and I wanted to make it clear that I'm the better one. There's two of you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. There can only be one. We got to exactly. set that up. Exactly. All right. I'm, yeah, I'm really happy that Kraus got the got a bonus. I'm glad Giles got a bonus. I, it was a cool fight. This reminded me a lot of the, honestly, of the Tristan Connolly fight kind of thing. Where, like, there was just such a thrill over how well Connolly was doing in that fight against uh, Pereira that people were just like, he he absolutely dominated him and this must be a win and all that. But, I mean, especially in this case, like, you just have to give Giles credit for how hard he was cracking Kraus every time. Yeah, it was and, it was a great fight. Yeah. I'm glad Kraus got the first round from the judges. I didn't necessarily think he would, but I'm glad he got it. That brings us to a woman's flyweight bout. Lauren Murphy, Andrea Lee. Also liked this fight quite a lot. I loved it, dude. I was so entertained for this. Like yeah. It was a lot of like rock'em, sock'em robots and it no was. head movement. And just... In the in the results post for BE, I was like, "Oh, they're it's a joust fest," because mm-hmm. it was like, "Okay, I'm gonna joust you in the nose, and then you joust me in the nose, and we'll just go back and forth with these straight punches, and then see what happens." That said, I don't think Lauren Murphy really won this fight. Mm. It's again like the whole John Jones thing. She won it off yep. her takedowns. Yeah, like if you don't do anything with your takedown, it's like, what good is it? And somebody gave her a 30-27 in this fight, which just mystified me. Yeah. Like, this is, I once again, Lauren, or Andrea Lee outlanded Lauren Murphy for significant strikes in every single round of the fight. All of them. Did she now? Yeah. It seemed a lot closer than that. Like, how bad was it? 43-32 to 32 in round one, which means, A, there's a ton of strikes in the fight. 38 to 33 in round two and 23 to 15 in round three. 
So okay. not huge numbers. I'm not surprised that there was a little mix in there of, oh, I thought Lor- I saw Lauren Murphy land more shots. I saw Andrea Lee land more shots. But I'm really surprised that a judge gave Murphy every single round. Yeah, this was a razor close fight. And Lee was the one mixing in variety and, and finishing yeah. with leg kicks, her punching combos with leg kicks. And, you know, she had some anaconda attempts in there, kind of. Yeah. Uh, it, it was fun, though. Competitive, very competitive yeah. fight. Super competitive fight, super fun. Murphy made the uh, – she called out Roxy after the fight, which I, I know we're, we're both arguing that Roxy deserves a, a shot at, at UFC gold again. But um, assuming the UFC doesn't immediately go that route, then Murphy's very smart to make that call out because she could easily get that fight. Yeah, and you know, with a win over Roxy, that's three straight for her. There you go. She can fight uh, Valentina. She can be the next paper contender. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I just uh, – I cringe even thinking about that. Like the lack of head movement and like how yeah. much Murphy gets hit and how much like she kind of likes that sort of fight. It's like, man, you you can do that with Andrea Lee. You can't do that with Shevchenko. Yep. But flyweight needs somebody. And like I said, I'm just not – I'm just not that interested. I would much rather just watch. Like I'll watch Shevchenko bury bodies more than I'll watch her just like stand and stare at Amanda Nunez. That's so. fair. All right, that brings us to a welterweight bout. And all right, I gotta I gotta eat a little crow on this one because Chaos Williams on in his regional footage that I've seen of him did not look ready to take this step forward at all. Yeah. He's like super athletic and allows his like athleticism to compensate for where, what he lacks in technique. And, And a lot of his regional fights involved like him getting hit really hard and stumbled and then just kind of running in and like grabbing a guy and throwing him down and getting top control and beating him up and, most of his opponents had like 500 records, just kind of can crushing his way through the regionals. There's some building blocks of like, yeah, maybe this guy could do something with some more seasoning and better, you know, better progression and stuff like that. But then Alex Morono just went out and was like, you can't hurt me. I'll just throw like swing, swing hammers at you and see what you do. And it turns out that Williams just swung hammers back at him. And they were a lot harder. Yeah, he he, man, it was like the wrong. It was definitely the wrong move because yeah. chaos with the K. By the way, chaos with the K is yep. was just so much more athletic and yep. willing to engage in that kind of brawl. And, and Morono was on a hot streak. You know, he came in with some strong wins, beating yep. Jack Otto, beating Max Griffin, and he kind of just threw it all away by not fighting a smarter fight. And, you know, I think Morona's gotten away with it a couple times, too. But it is one of those things, like, even going into this, like, I got to pick Morona here. I think he'll dominate. I think he'll put Williams away quick. But Morona is also one of the least athletic fighters in the UFC. So there's always a chance. But I I did not expect Williams to be the dude to capitalize on it. And he absolutely did. And, like, aside from not being athletic, like, Morona's tough. Yeah, he like, is. He, he's a tough dude. He so is. to see him just get blitzed and not even have a chance to recover, you know, you have to credit Chaos for just bringing it and just going pedal to the metal. And and once he saw his killer instinct is, is what it is. Yep. It's phenomenal. He saw he had his guy hurt and he just went with it. And and you know, for taking a short notice fight too, it's it's kind of it's the worst way Morono could have fight fought and it's the best way that somebody like Williams has to fight which is that like you know the longer this fight goes the more experience and the more adrenaline and all that is going to start playing a factor and the more your own sort of you know your own lack of depth and lack lack of a game plan is going to start playing into things but Morono just kind of threw all that out the window by just rushing him and assuming he could put him out in a minute and then Williams, it was just on Williams to answer back, and it became, you know, in, inside two minutes, just swinging wild punches, anyone can win. 
Yeah. And how about this? Getting a performance bonus in your UFC yep. debut. Also, Short notice. Like, that's brilliant. Super, super happy to see that, too. I love seeing that kind of thing rewarded. These guys fighting on the bottom, you know, fighting in his debut, something like that. He's probably coming in on like a $13,000, $15,000 UFC contract. Suddenly yeah. he's banking close to a hundred grand for one night after, you know, assuming he had a performance or he, he gets a win bonus too, bumps him up to like 30 and 50 and like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. That's, that's a ton of money. It's a good Man, for him. It's, it's, it's sometimes it pays off to take those short notice entries into the UFC. Yeah. I did not expect this would be one of those times, but I was way wrong. Bantamweight bout before that, Mario Batista beat Miles Johns, and, you know, I The adjustments. Did, this was the adjustments. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, this is also, like, I didn't love what Batista was doing in that first round. He was kind of yeah. looking a little flighty, not really willing to commit, getting outpowered by Johns, but he kept throwing those flying knees, and just, Johns didn't have any reaction to him at all. And by the second round, he had that timing down perfect. And John's never even, you know, never saw it coming. And it was the way Bautista was throwing it. Yeah. So in the first round, he's just throwing it with the right right knee. Boom. And yeah. like weird, like extending his leg, almost like a kick. Yep. And I think it was because he wanted to throw a Superman punch off it. But in round two, he threw the jump knee. Yep. Like he switched knees and he caught yep. it with the left knee. And I think John's just was not ready. Yeah. Like, he's like, okay, I've seen this before. He's going to miss. And then he's like, oh, wait, the left one's here. Boom. Oh, crap. Yep. Man, Johns was looking so good in that first round. Real tight, beautiful counters, landing smooth right hands, smooth hooks. And I was like, man, this is going to get ugly for Bautista. He's getting outgunned here. And what, is he going to wrestle? Like, you're not going to – I didn't think he was going to out-wrestle Johns. No. And then, but man, Bautista just showed up with some venom, and Killer yeah. Instinct kicked in, and he he got the ground and pound. That was why I picked Bautista going in. Is that he's just like, you watch his his fights coming up and stuff like that, and he's just such a dyed in the wool hyper confident scrapper. Like he's not the most athletic dude out there, but he's got a pretty nuanced striking game, and he's got a ton of confidence that he will just be able to hang in the fight and find openings. He was a lot more reserved in that opening round. He was. That's why I was worried. That's why I say I was. I did not like the way he was going early because I was like, "Man, this is not the dude who just went out and like tried to take it to uh, uh, Corey Sandhagen." Yeah. Out of the you know. It was good to see. Yeah. Because it, it looked intentional. It did. I, and he said as much afterward. He was like, "I." He won that Jinsu Sun fight last time, and he's just like, "I don't want to go out here and brawl," and. He found, you know, he, he, like I say, he tested that knee out and tested it and found the, found the gap and Johns didn't make an adjustment and Batista And he got himself, he got himself a performance bonus. Yep. Well-deserved, well-deserved performance bonus. Further down, Journey Newsom knocked out Domingo Pilarte and... Also, this fight was looking really bad for Journey Newsom. Got cracked with a head kick immediately in like the first two seconds. Yeah. And then, boy, does Domingo Pilarte get hit just about harder than almost any other fighter I've seen. <laughs> it was a perfect, like, textbook right hand. Yeah. Like, it doesn't get any more perfect than that. Like, this is how you throw your overhand right. Yeah. Like, it, it was, it was. It looked like he was hitting a pad, like a focus mitt or something. Yeah, no, it was it was beautiful. And Dominic, I, like, I was watching tape on this fight, and Dominic Cruz was comparing Domingo Pilarte to Luke Rockhold. I was like, mm. yeah, I I see it. <laughs> Certainly see yeah. it now. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's never a good thing. <laughs> he's he's just got this this way that he positions himself and that he holds his head and that he turns from strikes and things like that, that just leaves him really exposed to getting hit super flush. And he's had it happen in almost every, in pretty much every one of his last three fights. He's just gotten crushed with hard shots. And 
Newsom, you know, turned that into a really fast stoppage. Yeah, that was that was lightning fast. Like this fight was over before I even knew it. Yep. And it's crazy that he didn't get a, a bonus for that. Yeah, well, Batista hitting that flying knee and then the uh the chaos by chaos. Yeah, the chaos Williams well deserved. Like I mean, like I said, I'm I'm really super pumped for Chaos Williams to get that because coming in on short notice like that, taking on a much more seasoned opponent a huge step up from the kind of guys that Williams was fighting and just blow him out of the water. Like you, you deserve a bonus for that. You know who else deserves a bonus that didn't get one? Dominic Reyes. Well, yeah, but the bonus was supposed to be that belt. Yeah, really? Ah, all right. I know. I know it's that taste is going to stay with you for a few days. Drink some water, wash your palate out. I have to or something. But, like, I picked Jones, so, like, I'm happy I was right. But, like, yeah, yeah. it's not like you, there's too much analysis that really went into it that's like, oh, it's close or whatever. But I just feel like, I just feel dirty. <laughs> I do. I feel dirty for this. So you're not supposed to win this way. Uh, uh, before that, Bantamweight bout, Andre Ewell beat Jonathan Martinez. Now, this is one that the Booth, Rogan, and Cruz and all them were trumpeting as an absolute robbery for Martinez. And I think they even pointed out at some point they thought one one of the judges wasn't even watching. Actually, yeah, was the judge not watching the fight? That might have been Murphy Lee. Yeah, I think it was after this. They noted, they, they were watching the, the judges. Yeah. and like, he's not even watching the fight. Yeah, Ewell Martinez was... Uh, they that they they were trumpeting this is a absolute robbery. I personally was not at all surprised Ewell got that win. I know Martinez chewed the hell up out of his legs. Yeah, but Ewell also outlanded him for the first two rounds at least, especially. It was a close fight. It was a it close was a fight. very close fight. I was happy with twenty nine twenty eight. Um, thirty twenty seven though. Uh, I don't know because Martinez was the one that did the most damage with those body kicks. Yeah, and that's that's as good to me. That's as good as rocking somebody to the face. Yeah, no, I like agree. If, if your opponent is visibly hurt from a body kick where they're grabbing their midsection and backing up, they're rocked. Yep. So like that's damage. So uh, that happened in two different rounds. Yeah. So there's, there's a good uh, argument to be made for Martinez winning it. I would not have been sad or mad if Martinez had won this fight. I'm just not. I'm not surprised judges didn't give it to him. This was the fight where the uh, the computers went down or whatever yeah. they said it was. Yep. Thirty twenty seven. That was surprising to me. I just I don't see it. Yeah. It was. I. I just think it was just a really close fight, honestly. Razor thin. Razor thin. You were landing more strikes over the course of the bout. Ray Martinez, you can argue landing the better strikes. Judges having a bad habit of not necessarily counting body work, at all. That's disrespectful. Yeah. By the way, bout before that, Yusuf Zalal with a unanimous decision over Austin Lingo. Not a bad fight. Kind of didn't feel like it belonged on a UFC card, but that's fair. A debut win for Zalal. Like it was, Ling. I thought Lingo would finish this early just because he's been such a power puncher regionally. And then the moment he didn't, it was just clear that he was technically out of his depth everywhere else, and it was just kind of like, oh. I don't know that Zalal is necessarily ready for a big step up in competition off this win, but Lingo does not look like he belongs here. No, I mean, he tried to bring the pressure, but Zalal really used his footwork to just stay away and stay opportunistic with his strikes. And, you know, he was getting takedowns and for Dars, and Lingo was mostly defensive for a lot of the fight. Yeah. Not 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 special, not nearly as interesting as a lot of the bouts above it, but 
an introduction to the UFC for a couple new fighters who will hopefully be able to show more in the future. I think Zalal is talking about going down to Bantamweight, and that could make him a more interesting fighter there where he might have a little more of a physical advantage than he did at 145. I don't know, though, because he's going to be slower against quicker guys, and I feel like he really relies on his footwork and being fast to escape a lot of uh, situations. So I don't even know if that would be a good move. Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's wrap back up at the top. We've already kind of picked over it a lot, but John Jones retaining his belt over Dominic Reyes. And, yeah, it is really hard not to say that John Jones kind of ha- should be fighting either Dominic Reyes or Tiago Santos again next time. Like, these are two straight fights now where the co- most commonly commonly called for fight after the, the fight was for Jones to actually fight the guy he just fought. Yeah, uh, for me, this one way more was way more clear. Yeah, I thought Jones beat Santos. I think Reyes beat Jones here. Yeah, like this. Uh, I feel dirty. Like I said, like I feel gross about it. You are you are a man composed of pure salt at this moment. Like a hundred percent salt. I feel 100%. like the Dead Sea right now. Yeah, that's how salty I am. And I love John Jones. I'm a big John Jones fan. I call him the GOAT. But, yeah. like, he lost this competition. Yeah. If it went six rounds, we might be saying something different. Mm-hmm. If there were no time limit, we might be saying something different. But as the rules are in place and the scoring system is set up, it's really hard for me to score that for John Jones, let alone four to one. Yeah. Well, that's that that scorecard is just nonsense and should be thrown out. Yeah. Maybe but. they need more judges. I don't know. <laughs> Get Scoring 12 judges in. 12 judges, one sitting at home watching, yeah. one like above the octagon with the bird's eye view. One, I don't know, something, anything. Maybe people who actually know about the sport watching the fights and actually watching the fights. Look, don't don't get too far into the clouds here, okay? It's a nice pipe dream, but I know it's the salt talking. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, for Shevchenko in the co-main event, we're left struggling with what is going to be her next fight. People calling for the Amanda Nunez rematch trilogy bout. I get the I get the knee jerk reaction to do it. I don't want to see it. It may happen anyway, but. Shevchenko at least certainly does not sound like she has any interest in leaving her division right now. So Nor should she. I mean, she's yeah. cleaning it out. Yeah. We'll see what the UFC wants to push. I mean, it's not like it's not like Nunez has done any big pay-per-views as a headliner yet, so they may not feel like it's even worthwhile to like spend one of their other dominant champions on a uh a pay-per-view again as a B-side against somebody else who is also, you know, not a big pay-per-view draw. She's definitely a big talent that we should appreciate while yes. we can. Uh, unquestionably. On that note, let's wrap things up before we start getting getting back into Jones Reyes talk. Thanks everyone for tuning in. You can find me on Twitter over at the Zane Simon. You can find Eddie on Twitter over at the Eddie Mercado. We will be back next week with UFC Fight Night Rio Rancho Anderson versus Blackovich 2. So everybody tune in for that one. Thanks, and we will see you soon.